No matter the timeline, setting, universe, or source book we look at along the vast series created by Mike Pondsmith, Johnny Silverhand was always destined to accomplish a singular feat, immortality. The idea of immortality itself is heavily ingrained within the character and arc of Johnny Silverhand. Now whether this is a blessing or a curse is entirely decided by your perspective. Even your choices throughout 2077 can decide the value in Silverhand's engram. Silverhand clearly didn't always make the best of choices as he went through his first attempt at what you could call life. He betrayed the trust of many of those who were closest to him brought others into harm's way, and eventually allowed his inflated ego to pull him into the iron sights of Adam Smasher, believing he had even a semblance of a chance at fighting him. Though of course, we all know how that ended, with his body split in two, and a shocked face as he dropped to the floor, only to be awoken years down the line in a sleepy V's head, despite immediately threatening to take V's body and posing as a threat. Who you work for, start talking! Fuck. Fuck. Fucking chip. Rip the thing out myself! No, wait! There isn't much blame you can place on a silver hand. He's been within what could only be described as hell for 50 years, as for the first time seeing the world again, albeit through a different perspective and time period. Though the relationship between V and Silverhand in the beginning can only at the bare minimum be described as rocky, he quickly comes to terms with the situation. He knows this is a chance to have another shot at life. Though his original perspective on this situation was of personal greed, his character grew far beyond that. He learns that the legitimate right path to take was one that didn't give him a second chance at living out his life, but rather a second chance at giving someone else a proper life. He wants to save V in whatever way is possible. His character arc completes with the involvement of V, who will clearly argue against you giving him his body, especially when your friendship with him was built over the game and at his alleged grave. What I told you with the Fist of Sophia, we stick to that. I'll go. You stay. Turning your back on the problem again? What? A little guilt creeps in and that's that? You give up? Stop. Just stop. <laughs> Gonna just roll over instead of fighting for what's yours? Decommiss yourself because you're too fucking scared to say goodbye? This is my decision. Let me make it. You're loyal, I'll grant you that. But damn it, are you dense? Haven't changed a bit since we met. I'm so damn tired, Johnny. I just want to start. I knew, even if I don't know what that means. I bet it'd be good for you, too. V, I'm just... I'm just scared for you. Though the ending can take us many different paths, there's a select few that properly give Silverhand the completed arc he deserved, many in which he maintains his theme of immortality no matter the result, seeing as he can either live on within V's body, leaving Night City and aiming to be a much better man than he could have ever envisioned for himself in his original life, or live through the net, unfortunately though, as a portion of a large conglomerate of AI. It is only through the devil ending that Silverhand's engram is likely destroyed, to never be recovered again. Seeing as V allows of all corporations, Arasaka, to mess around within his head, and remove the terminally spreading relic of Silverhand. Unless, of course, there is a digital copy of said Ingram, then this destruction of it would not be nearly as prevalent, at least to the overall image of Silverhand. Despite what many will say, this was always a part of his entire character arc. Silverhand was never meant to remain dead after the 2023 raid, the same way Alt had always been meant to escape the Arasaka mainframe after 2013. There is even a misconception that originally, there would be a decision at the start of the game to select who you had in your head as an engram. Mike Pondsmith himself officially stated on this topic against it. The original comments stated, Interesting. 
because before they got Keanu, it would have been possible to get Morgan, Johnny, or, or Saburo in your head. Then they rewrote it to be just Johnny. This was early in development. To which Pondsmith responded, Word of God, nope, always was Johnny, I know, I was there. So however the misconception of choosing Saburo or Blackhand as an engram had spread, it was never the case. Pondsmith had always planned for Silverhand to come back. The primary reason we can claim that this was always meant to be a part of Silverhand's character arc and that he was destined for immortality is because there is a source book released that predated even Firestorm Shockwave. This source book was named Cyber Generation, and although it's no longer canon, it bears shocking similarities to the currently released source books in the canon timeline, such as Shockwave and Red. Cyber Generation featured a new setting based for Cyberpunk 2020 and an alternative 2027 where the corporations had won, becoming the new governments, and where players took on the roles of young adults with more heroic motives for fighting against the machine. In terms of tone, Cyber Generation differs from its predecessor somewhat, as the player characters take the part of nanotech-enhanced youngsters in an oppressive world ruled by adults who fear and seek to control them. The special powers of the Cyber Evolved children give the game a definite superhero flavor. The players can be many different roles, such as actors, inventors, or motorbike racers, but there can be many more. Within Cyber Generations, the events of Shockwave had never taken place, seeing as the release of the source book was before development of Shockwave and completely contradicts the material of the fourth corporate war within. Though this doesn't mean Silverhand never died. Starting on page 2 of 7, there's a complete entry dedicated to Johnny Silverhand, codenamed as The Mystic. This entry states that Silverhand is assassinated within the year of 2019, his body yet again being split in half and placed into a Cairo tank. Alt, who had created a second version of herself separate from her net self, sent the second alt to retrieve Silverhand, creating an engram from his then soul-killed body, and uploading it to a suitable clone body just as she did for herself. It's from this point out that Silverhand becomes immortal. Every time he dies, he is brought back and yet again another grown body to suit his engram. Though every time, he loses hold of himself, bit by bit, and becoming detached from who he used to be, within an endless loop. It's this loss of self that happens to be a major theme in the character of Johnny Silverhand. Cyberpunk at its core is a world about self-image and identity. Everyone is aiming to be somebody, whether it be a top-of-the-line fixer with connections and, a, and every bit of activity, a solo at the top to be feared, a charismatic rocker boy beginning anti-corpo movements with his music blasting loudly. It's all the same. They're all identities every individual wants to achieve and be known for. Everyone and their mother wants to be the next Silverhand or Blackhand. It's almost ironic that Silverhand is the one to be losing himself upon death. Even in 2077, just like Cyber Generations, he's clearly not who he used to be. His memories fall flat and incorrect. He spouts nonsense and says whatever it takes to make himself feel better at every turn. It's only at his grave that he really begins to realize the trail of destruction he leaves behind himself. Here lies Johnny Silverhand. Save my life. V, you don't know how much I want that to be true. Listen, I realize I fucked up a lot of things. Either let down or used every last person who gave me their trust. Blind, selfish bastard that I was. But I've managed one thing for now. Not to fuck this up. What we have. No, Johnny, you fucked that up too. You used me. Lied to me. I can't trust you at all. <clears throat> Is it too late to ask for a second chance? What do you want from me? Most people I thought were my friends. They couldn't even stand to be in the same room with me. You're fucking closest to me by a long shot. There, 24-7. And yet, you don't seem to hate my living guts. At least so it seemed, till now. Okay. But as second chances go, this is your last. I refuse to be that naive. 
I'll try damned hard. Silverhand, despite this, is the driving identity, motivation, and personality of Cyberpunk 2077's gameplay, and V himself. V really doesn't have much of a singular personality or guidance, seeing as the game had to mesh the three different life paths into a coherent game. Silverhand is left to pick up the pieces and give that guidance. Overall, Silverhand is doomed to a life of immortality and loss of self. Every opportunity he receives to take a step forward, he loses a part of himself. This was always a part of his character arc and the vision Pondsmith had. There truly aren't any real happy endings within Cyberpunk. Let me know what you thought about this video down in the comments. I think Silverhand's character planning, arcs, and themes can be some of the most interesting parallels with the cyberpunk world if you delve into them. I plan on completely covering Cyber Generations and its possible correlations and practical spoilers of the current timeline in another video. So if you're interested in every bit of lore from Cyber Generations we could apply to our current canon timeline, make sure to remain tuned into my channel for an upcoming video on this specific topic. As always, I look forward to seeing what you all have to say and to the future content I get to produce. Have a great day, Chooms. Hey Choom, thanks for watching the whole video. If you enjoyed and want to keep up to date on Cyberpunk 2077 lore, discoveries, and additional content, subscribe to my channel on screen. If you've been watching and would like to support my content further, I now have channel memberships for as low as $1 a month. It can get you access to the emoticons and icons on screen, member polls, comment priority, as well as your name at the end of all my videos. But overall, my channel and I will remain as it has been. Have a great day.